as you can see we see these recurring peaks for small mass numbers these peaks correspond to alpha particle carbon 12 and other such particles. Hi in my previous video I talked about the liquid drop model of the nucleus in which I made a comparison between the nucleus of an atom with that of a drop of a liquid because some of the properties between both these two objects are very much similar and by doing so we arrived at the expression for binding energy of a nucleus and at the end of the previous video we saw that when we plotted the binding energy per nucleon then we ended up getting a graph which was very much similar to the binding energy curve of experimental data so that way we know that the liquid drop model has some validity of its own now the curve that we obtained using the previous expressions can further be made much much more accurate by making some modifications or we can say making some additions or corrections to this previous formula. So in this video I am going to talk about two more energy terms which if we include in the binding energy expression that we will end up getting a curve which is much much more accurate. In the process we will end up deriving the semi-empirical binding en energy formula for a given nucleus. Before we start I suggest that if you have not checked the earlier video please go through that first because in that video I talk about the similarities between a nucleus and the drop of a liquid and how those similarities lead to the binding energy expression that I have in front of me. So let's begin. So the binding energy or the stability of a nucleus is also affected by the total number of neutrons and protons inside a given nucleus. Nuclei usually tend towards those configurations where the number of neutrons and number of protons are almost equal to each other. If in a given nucleus the number of neutrons or protons is much much more higher then in those cases those nuclei are usually unstable and they undergo radioactive decay processes to lead to configurations where for the same mass number you end up getting similar or approximately equal number of neutrons and protons. This leads to what is known as the asymmetry energy. The asymmetry energy is basically an energy where uh, those configurations which have a large difference in the number of protons and neutrons are much much more unstable compared to those configurations where the number of protons and neutrons are almost equal. So let's see what is the uh, expression for asymmetry energy and how we can apply it to the binding energy expression. So in this case I have two different configurations however in both these two configurations we have the same mass number that means I have two nuclei but they have the same mass number but to understand this we also need to know that in a nucleus the neutrons and protons arrange themselves in energy levels which are much similar to the energy levels of an atom so inside an atom you have uh, uh, electrons which arrange themselves in certain energy levels similarly in the nucleus the neutrons and protons also arrange themselves in a uh, energy levels what you need to know is that the nuclear energy levels uh, where the neutron energy levels and the proton energy levels are approximately similar and uh, if we assume that the energy level width for all the different energy levels is some approximate value E in that case we can derive an expression for what is the difference in energy between two configurations let's say configuration number one and configuration number two so both these two configurations could be for a nucleus having same mass number so in this case I have taken nucleus having mass number 12 and mass number 12 that means there are 12 number of particles in configuration 1 and 12 number of particles in configuration 2. However, there is a very important distinction. The distinction is that in the first configuration, the number of neutrons and the number of protons are 6 and 6 respectively. So they are equal. In the second configuration, however, the number of neutrons is 10 and the number of protons is 2. So as you can see, in both these two configurations, the mass number is same, but in one configuration, the number of neutrons and is equal to the number of protons. In the other configurations, the number of neutrons exceeds the number of protons. So let's see how the energy of both these two configurations are different. So as you can see here, in this case, the difference in the number of neutrons and protons is basically equal to 8. So let's write, to create, to create an excess of 8 neutrons, so which is basically n minus z. So n is the number of neutrons, z is the number of protons. So in this case, to create an excess of n minus z or 8 neutrons, we need to convert 4 protons into 4 new neutrons. We need to convert 4 number of protons to 4 number of neutrons. In that case, we will get an excess of 8 number of neutrons in the new configuration. Now what that 
does that do? That basically increases the energies of these new neutrons. So as you can see, these protons were in a certain energy level. The moment you convert them to neutrons, they rise up, they become neutrons, but then now they occupy an energy level which is much higher compared to these protons. So what is the change in the energy of these new neutrons as compared to the previous proton versions? So if you look in this particular case, this these two protons the moment they became neutrons jump to this particular energy level the difference in energy between these two energy levels is equal to 2e if we consider e as the energy level difference between all these different energy levels similarly these two protons also jump to a new energy level the moment they become neutrons where the energy difference is equal to 2e so these new neutrons will occupy an energy level higher compared to the previous proton versions by an amount of by an amount of 2e which can be written as 4e by 2 which can again be written as half into 4 into e where 4 is nothing but the number of protons which got converted to neutrons so if i replace this expression i end up getting half n minus z by 2e so why am i doing this i am doing this because i want to obtain a general expression so in this case if I convert n minus z by 2 number of protons into n minus z by 2 number of neutrons, I end up getting an excess of n minus z number of neutrons. And in that case, the energy level of each new neutron will exceed its previous, previous proton energy levels by an amount of half n minus z by 2 e. So what is going to be the to total energy difference between these two configurations? The total energy difference between these two configurations is the energy per nucleon multiplied by the new number of neutrons. So the energy difference between both these two configurations, configuration 1 and 2, is simply number of new neutrons multiplied by energy difference per nucleon when a proton gets converted to a new neutron. So the energy difference per nucleon is given by this expression and the number of neutrons, new neutrons was basically half n minus z as I just now obtained multiplied by this expression half into half n minus z e. So this ends up becoming, so this ends up becoming 1 by 8 n minus z whole square e right now n here is what n is nothing but the number of neutrons which is basically equal to the mass number minus the atomic number so this can be written as 1 minus 8 a minus z minus z whole square e is equal to 1 by 8 a minus 2 z whole square so this is basically the amount of energy difference between these two configurations. So if I end up converting a configuration where the number of neutrons and protons are similar to a configuration where there is an excess number of neutrons or excess number of protons, then, the, then this new configuration will have an energy difference with the previous configuration by this. What is the purpose of this energy? The purpose of this energy is basically to destabilize the nucleus. It decreases the binding energy of this stable version of a nucleus. So therefore, the binding energy of the nucleus gets decreased by this particular amount when I convert a certain number of protons to neutrons or vice versa. So therefore, this will act as towards decreasing the binding energy of the entire system. So let's suppose that we denote this as E. A. E represents the energy contribution towards the binding energy. Small a represents that it is asymmetry energy. And since this is decreasing the stability of the nucleus, we use the negative symbol. Now, what about this energy expression E, which is basically the energy difference between different energy levels of the nucleus? It is seen that this energy difference between the energy levels inside the nucleus is inversely proportional to the mass number. This is because when the nucleus is much, much more larger, then it is much more tightly packed and the energy level difference becomes smaller and smaller. So for bigger nuclear structures, you have energy levels, diff uh, energy level differences becoming smaller and smaller. So if I replace this expression in this particular expression, then I can absorb the proportionally constant with an expression, let's say small a uh, four in this case, because this is the fourth term and I write the rest of the terms a minus 2z whole square upon a. So this basically is basically the 
contribution of asymmetry energy towards decreasing the binding energy of a given system. The next energy term is the pairing energy term. This is basically a result of the fact that it is seen that in nuclei where there is an even number of protons and an even number of neutrons, they are much much more stable compared to nuclei which have even number of protons and odd number of neutrons and odd number of protons and even number of neutrons. The least stable structure is for those nu nuclei where there is an odd number of protons and odd number of neutrons. So in order of stability it is usually seen that even even nuclei are much stable and therefore have higher binding energy compared to even odd nuclei or odd even nuclei which is again much much more stable and higher and has higher binding energy compared to odd odd nuclei basically nucleus which have odd number of protons and odd number of neutrons now it is usually seen that the variation in energy or stability between these uh, different uh, uh, versions of nuclei is directly proportional to a to the power minus 3 by 4. now this expression is purely experimental and uh, we can use this as an additional term to get a much much more accurate graph which represents the differences in energies between even on even even and or or nuclei. So for this particular term, we can use the expression of E P. So capital E represents the contribution towards binding energy and P represents the contribution towards uh, of pairing energy. This is basically equal to plus minus zero. So plus minus zero simply represents that if the nucleus is even even nuclei it has a pro positive number of protons and positive number of neutrons, it will get added to the binding energy. If it is an odd odd nuclei, that means it has odd number of neutrons and odd number of protons. This expression will get uh, subtracted from the binding energy. And for the case of even odd or odd even nuclei, we have zero addition towards the binding energy. And this particular expression where there is a variation at the mass number. So we can write a constant of proportionality A5, A to the power minus 3 by 4. So this is our final term of the pairing energy. Now, by adding the asymmetry energy and the pairing energy, we can obtain the final expression for the binding energy of the given nucleus. So from the original liquid drop model, we had the binding energy which had a contribution from the volume energy, from the surface energy and the coulombic energy. And now by making certain corrections, we also have additions from asymmetry energy and pairing energy. Let's write the expressions for each of them. So this here is the final expression for the binding energy of any given nucleus. The first three terms are obtained from the considerations of the liquid drop model and the fourth and the fifth term is basically obtained from an experimental observation where we do observe the nuclei tend to have an equal number of protons and neutrons and nuclei where the number of protons and neutrons are even then they are much much more stable compared to the even odd or odd odd versions. So this is also known as the semi-empirical binding energy formula. We can easily plot this kind of an expression and see whether or not we end up getting a much more accurate version of the binding energy curve. To do that, we have to just divide the entire expression with A because we will then be able to compare the binding energy per nucleon. So if we do that, so the binding energy per nucleon will be when I divide the entire expression by capital A that will give me A1 minus A2 by So this is the expression for the binding energy per nucleon. So the we have a very beautiful binding energy curve from experimental data which compares the binding energy per nucleon versus the mass number. And let's try to plot this entire expression and compare that with the actual experimental data and see whether or not we end up getting a resemblance. So here I have created a program in Scilab where I'm trying to replicate the semi-empirical expression that I've just now obtained. I've used these constants A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. The values of these constants are in mega electron volts and you can find them uh, in Wikipedia or using a Google search. Here I have also included the expressions for asymmetry energy as well as the pairing energy. 
if I run my code, then I end up getting an expression uh, curve which looks like this. So this is the binding energy curve, where the first line is the volume energy, this is the coulombic energy and the surface energy, and these two black lines, one of them represents the pairing energy and the asymmetry energy. As you can see, the binding energy curve that we get is much, much Accu more accurate compared to the older binding energy curve which we obtained from liquid drop model which is shown here in this dotted black line. As you can see, we see these recurring peaks for small mass numbers. These peaks correspond to alpha particle carbon-12 and other such particles. And the peak of the binding energy curve is somewhere in this region, around 56. And it starts decreasing after that. If you compare that to the binding energy curve, you see that these kind of peaks are replicated in the actual binding energy curve. And after mass number 56, the binding energy starts decreasing. If you're interested in looking at my code, then my code is available on 8physics.com where I have created a post and I have uh, put up all my images that I've obtained the original binding energy curve using liquid drop model and the binding energy curve using the corrections. I've also included my code which you can uh, use and replicate this kind of a curve on your own. So as you saw, we got, we got a very good uh, looking curve where, where the binding energy curve obtained from the expression from the semi-empirical and binding energy formula and the binding energy curve obtained from experimental data had a very accurate representation. That way we can show, we can say that the liquid drop model and its additional corrections has some validity in explaining the behavior of the nucleus. That's it for today. Uh, see you in the next video. Thank you very much.